I miss you. How are you? Hello. Hi, how are you? Yes, hello. I do. Twenty third to order. Nina, please call the roll. Here, Lynch. Here. 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 So I don't see the pledge on there, but I would like us to rise. the approval of the June 9th meeting minutes. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the June 9th meeting. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? If not, we do not have to do a roll call right then. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Big Time Burgers and Brew have a request for outdoor dining. Is someone here? So, has everybody had a chance to, and this is at your facility open? They're both open. Oh, they're both open now? Okay. So would this be the, the, the request for in front of the one that's currently where they have the most delicious onion rings? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, this is in front of um, in front of the Okay. So, Dan, would you like to speak to that? We don't have an ordinance on that, but would you like to? No, and as it, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. So as we had some conversations about uh, 
what other cities around us do on these. I made a couple of suggestions that if we're going to uh, entertain granting outdoor seating, which is not a bad idea, we need to make sure that there's a couple of criteria. Uh, some of the common things that we would expect to see in that would be that the uh, seating area remain uh, ADA compliant, that uh, if they're serving alcohol in the outdoor seating area, they have to comply with excise and the uh, alcohol beverage uh, requirements. Uh, some of the cities have uh, required a fence or some sort of barrier, which is not a bad idea, particularly if there's alcohol, I think that's required. Um, and I sent you those thoughts, and so I think those are all pretty reasonable. If we're going to be encroaching, and I'm not that familiar with the property lines over there and what have you, if we're going to be encroaching into city-owned or city-maintained property, then I would have a couple of other requests, like that we're named as an additional insured and all that kind of stuff if somebody gets hurt. But beyond that, that was kind of my 100-mile high view of it, and that seems to be sort of the common uh, theme amongst uh, some of these other uh, municipalities. And I think you've all seen the Crown Point one. Um, Valpo, I think uh, Nina sent over Valpo's, um, and then uh, I took a look at Hobart's, and they're pretty much along that line. So, so you can grant that with those types of restrictions, or, but I, I am curious: is it is any of this encroaching on city maintained property? City? No, no, it's not. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Wrong. But you're correct. Right. Oh, the building is set back from the right away line. About a foot, it varies, but uh, but then the sidewalk goes all the way to the building. So there's a small sliver that's of the sidewalk that's on owned private land, okay. and then the balance of the sidewalk is on the public right of way. So what is the public way? Yeah. So if we're talking about getting into public property, then I would suggest that that we have something that lists the city as an additional insured on your premises liability uh, policy, just in case something, you know, things happen. People start lawyering up. Oh, sorry to say that. Uh, but then... Uh, <laughs> you can. <laughs> right. You know, so, um, so yeah, that was the, the, I would certainly make that uh, a condition. And those are the things I mentioned. Unfortunately, I missed the last meeting when this was discussed, so I apologize for any redundancy, but how many feet in front of that building are you going to be using? And I know there was a sketch, but if you could uh, refresh my memory. How many tables? You know, just uh, give us a, a quick quick and dirty overview of what you have planned. If that's okay, board members. Absolutely. Are you going to have a fence? 
to the new yeah, fence. Not in. a permanent fence. It's so a movable uh, barrier, visual barrier, but not a fence. Um, so it's, it's. But it will delineate between. Correct. The seating the, area and the. Yeah, you'll enter it at, at each end, and it'll, it'll separate it from the rest of the pedestrians. And it is uh, a plan that goes before uh, excise for the. This, this, this enclosure is a requirement with excise. Has yeah, excise approved it? Or yeah, all these presented to them. They'll yes. come out and look at it. Okay. Yes, they were aware of it when we first uh, we first approached them a couple of years ago. That was the initial idea was to have outdoor seating. Mm -hmm. But um, our capacity already inside. We went through last summer when we first opened, so kind of we, were, we figured we ease into it this year. All right, the only thing right now that's going on that might um, stop us from, from other things is that the, the actual barriers that I wanted to put up, we call them barriers, but basically the, like the, the extensions that we would use to, to um, <coughs> let everybody know what's a designated area, those tripods are not available right now because of everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff is not being manufactured fast enough. So, I mean, I would love to do it this summer, but um, I don't know if we're going to be able to because, again, these extensions are not available. Are you talking about something that's similar to at an air, like at an airport? Yes. Is that the same style? Yes. That's, that's you have the stanchions and then correct. the yes. expandable? Yes. For now, with your permission. Mm -hmm. But eventually, uh, I'd like to do something more decorative that I'd like to present in the maybe, maybe late fall or the winter for next year. Does, is that permission. an excise approved barrier? Have they? Well, excise hasn't approved it because I, I have to get your permission. So as soon as I get your permission, then I, yeah. it's, a, it's just a phone call away. Mm -hmm. They are aware of the plan. They know it's been like, yeah. He says, well, you know, I've been doing business with SIS for, for a long year. So they, they're aware of all our restaurants. Sure. So they're like, oh, if you do what you did at the other previous places, like, I think it shouldn't be a problem. But of course, let's get your permission first. And then with that, I can call them and they can go ahead and get as far as this one insured, of course, yes, we'll take care of the insurance and everything that takes place with anything that we, we use. Isn't that already ADA compliant, the sidewalk? Yeah. Yes. yeah, but sometimes that changes, you understand. So what I'm okay. talking about there is sometimes someone will encroach on the walkway and they don't leave enough space on the walkway right. to remain ADA compliant mm -hmm. or the space that they <coughs> fenced off is no longer ADA compliant. Gotcha. So that's what I meant. Yeah. So that can change things, but it looks like they considered that. But I would suggest, again, any approval be contingent upon those things. Okay. And this, and this will only be limited to couples do I? only. Because of course, of yes. our, our situation again, mm -hmm. we like to make sure we keep that distancing. So it would only be right now limited. Yeah, I like the idea that you only have two people per table. Yes. That allows you to. Keep the distance. Correct. And then again, like I said, I'd like to revisit this in a fall or winter with uh, something a little bit more nice. Yeah. But again, I, I don't even know if this is going to happen this summer. But again, these extensions, they're, uh, they're only manufactured to six feet long. I'm looking for some that are 10, 15 feet long. They're no, they don't have those. There's a big price difference in, in purchasing too many six feet. So is there something you could use as a modified extension that would work? Have you looked into that? Uh, yes, I have. Um, but again, it's, um, it's a cost-effective thing, too. Mm -hmm. To do something temporarily, you know, for about two months, mm -hmm. spend that kind of money. Well, no. Possibly it isn't very attractive, but what about snow fence, just, you know, temporarily? I would love that. That, that would work, too. But again, it's also... Uh, well, you, I like to also portray the image to make it look nice. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just because for the sake of you know let's do business and let's put these right. ugly looking things up. <laughs> mm -hmm. I would rather just you know we have yeah, the capacity. We sit 160 people. The 80 people that we're accommodating now are they're comfortable. They're fine. But let's face it, we're never really at 100 percent capacity. Who really is? You know. So I think uh, I think for now you know we'll. I, I, again, I, I would love to do it, but I don't want to do it. I'm sure it I present. 
So do other members of the board have any questions? I, I like it. I, I think that that's something we're missing here in Portage. And I would love to see that happen. So um, I'm hoping you're able to get something that works for you. Yes. So um, hearing no further questions, we'll entertain a motion. Do we need to place amendments on there? Okay. Restrictions. Restrictions, contingencies. Okay. I'll make a motion that we let big time burgers move ahead with their outside seating, contingent upon compliance with the ADA requirements and the excise people and the insurance. Anything else the lawyer figures out? <laughs> 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 I'll, I'll provide all necessary paperwork. I second it. We have a motion and a second. If there's no further discussion, Nina, I think I'd like you to talk the roll, please. Mayor Lynch? Yes. Member Finley? Yes. Member Lewis? Yes. Member Sanity? Yes. Member Williams? Yes. We hope you. you. We hope you're able to do that this thank year. You. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, new business. We have bridging of employee service time. Nina, is that you bringing that up? Yes. This is just to go on record. Um, Chief Sasby, I have a letter that, that you raised you all have um, for Mr. Frail on the bridges service time. Um, we also their service time was bridged, but just as a matter of record. We also have Norma and AJ's. AJ and Norma, is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Just on some record. So, Tim, do you have anything you want to say about that, please? No, I mean, it's pretty much in the letter. Uh, it, you know, basically, uh, I found out that his longevity was bridged because that's based on service time with the city. Um, his seniority is not bridged because seniority is continuous service with the city. His service to the city was interrupted. He originally wanted to move out to back to Las Vegas where he was from. He left in good standing, came back in good standing, he is in good standing right now. Uh, so being that his longevity is is bridged based upon his uh, time of service, it seemed logical to me that the vacation, that's how it's based on, usually not continuous service. It's based on time of service. So we wanted to go ahead and bridge that back. Um, he actually, you know, I mean, this actually could have been done a few years ago. Uh, we think it was presented, but we don't believe it was presented to the Board of Works. We think this one or two people made the decision arbitrarily, and a formal request was never really put in. He's not asking for any back time. Uh, we're already in agreement with that with him. He's just wanting to be made uh, in whole, so to speak. Uh, and bought into current policy. So, so we, have no, we don't have an ordinance in place, uh, Mr. Witten, that uh, addresses bridging things like this? I do not know. Okay. I know we have. I'm just talking about this. quite a bit. And yeah. Done it. Have we done it in the past? Has there been yeah. precedent been set? Yeah, yeah we, we have. Just, I mean, the Board of Works clearly has the authority to do that. Okay. It's just a question of. And there's no issue with the union contract in no. regard to this? No, if, if we were talking about his seniority and all that kind of thing, yeah, there's all kinds of issues there. Uh, but no, there is not. Sure. Well, those are the only concerns I have. Hearing no further concerns, we need a motion to approve the bridging of, of these three employees. I'll make a motion to um, bridge the vacation time request for the breeze at Mango Place. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Nina, would you please call the roll? Mayor Lynch? Yes. Member Finley? Yes. Member Lewis? Yes. Member Sonny? Yes. Member Yes. We have a copy machine slash printer contract with consolidation of our system. Someone here is to that? Meeting? No, no. Um, so basically, what this does is that, well, many of you guys remember when my, my office and one of the machines in the planning department, one of the machines in the building department, we repressed that contract because it had expired. Um, we put the rest of them on hold because well, no one was working in the building really. Um, this consolidates all, it will amend our current contract 
with my office, the building department, the planning department. It adds all the machines that are at other city, at, in city hall or other city facilities, <coughs> buildings, and it also adds a wide format printer to the planning department. I don't know how long they've been without, but it's been long enough. Um, and, it, and it saves $160 a month. And so, it'll be one bill that comes through. That's the nice part right there. <laughs> right. So these are all new machines? Yes. On a service agreement, no, no paying for toner or repairs. It's re it, there's no additional pieces of machinery. It's just refreshing what's there. So we're getting a better contract for basically the same amount of money. Yes, and it will allow for all of the all the machines will be up for renewal at the same time. The only thing we pay for is paper, correct? Anytime we can save money, that's a good thing. So are there any other questions? If not, I will ask for a motion to approve the printer contracts. I'll make a motion. Go ahead, I'll make a motion to approve the printer contract. No second. We have a motion and a second. Nina, please call the roll. Nina Lynch? Yes. Number Finley? Yes. Number Lewis? Yes. Number Sonny? Yes. Number Williams? Yes. Streetlight and traffic signal maintenance request. AJ? Yes, we have uh, two uh, requests that we would like to put out for quotes. Uh, one is for streetlights and the second uh, are for traffic signals. Um, with your permission, we'll uh, get those out on the street and be presenting quotes at a subsequent board works meeting. Are there any questions by the board? Are, are these current these street lights currently under contract? Maybe? No. Do we just um, who do we we just call? We're just not fixing them. Okay. Um, I don't know the status of our budget in the general fund to uh, pay for the work. Um, it appears that the Redevelopment Commission in subsequent years has been paying for this service. But as we sit here today, we do not have contracts to provide service to either street lights or traffic signals. So you can just put it out to a qualified vendor and get qualified? Yes, sir. We have. Um, We'll be soliciting quotes uh, from four uh, vendors for street lights and four for traffic signals. Do you know who those are? Yes, sir. Um, for street lights, we'll be contacting Circle R, Continental Electric, Hawk Enterprises, and Midwestern Electric, and, and it will be the same for the traffic signals. So it may cost more up front to get them all repaired, but then I can have a maintenance agreement so that it would be more of a plan. The, 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 the solicitation will be for services per per repair. Um, so there won't be a, it, it may be more up front because there's more to do straight away. Um, but um, uh, but yeah, no, it'll be a per service call sort of thing. Um, it's a little more complicated than that because we do have some warranties on some of the uh, so the fixtures um, that were replaced with the LED program. So there's a, some, there's going to be some nuance in this, um, but uh, we're aware of that, and we'll have to uh, sort through that when those situations present themselves. All right, I'll make a motion that we allow the community development department to move forward uh, in seeking uh, bids from the four vendors they stated for street lights and traffic signal repairs. I'll second, but I have one question. Um, how long of a contract are we considering to enter? Um, I would prefer to do a 12-month contract, okay. and now that we're in mid-year, um, I don't. I, I think we're going to have to think about that a little bit in the solicitation for 2020. Um, however, staggering some of these contracts might be beneficial to the department so that we're not doing all of these contracts January of every year. But we have to rectify that with, with budget, with the budgeting process. So 
I think we need to think a little bit more about that. Our intention right now, I believe, is to go for the year. Uh, yeah, our, our intention right now is to solicit quotes for an annual contract. Okay. Thank you so much, AJ. You're welcome. Are there any further questions? If not, Nina, please call the room. Yes. 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 We have the Portage Chamber of Commerce Business Night, Nancy. Yep. Um, with your permission, we'd like to move forward with uh, having that event on July 16th from 4 to 7. Um, I've been working with the Park Department with Amy on um, all the details on that. Um, we're currently at uh, 40 vendors who are interested in coming. Um, we are going to be doing social distancing, so every table will be six feet apart. Um, we will have a beer garden, which will be fenced off, uh, provided by Brennan Clancy. And we are partnering with PTLEA to provide entertainment um, on the amphitheater stage. Nancy, are you watching the spikes just in case there's a surge? I mean, we're doing pretty good in Indiana, knock on wood. Yeah. Uh, some of the other states aren't. So do you have... Any other measures? We um, tell each vendor to have sanitizers on their table. Okay. Um, we're having masks um, recommended but not required because it is going to be after the 4th of July. Okay. And if there is inclement weather, we are going to move it to Woodland Park upstairs okay. and downstairs. And we know that we need to be able to them 24 hours ahead of time before we're going to move it. Okay. <coughs> Make a motion to approve the Florida Chamber's request for their uh, business night, Florida Community and Business Night on July 16th at Founder Square. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. You know it'll be a great event. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm excited too. So <laughs> okay, we have the 4th of July drive around parade. Is someone here to speak to that? Yes, my name is Mark Eastrock. I live in Portage here. Um, just looking for the approval to. Excuse me, could you please um, stand? Because it's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're just looking for approval for it. We got a lot of feedback from social media on people wanting to join in and be a part of that, even though we're not having the fourth parade this year and I just think it would be a great thing to kind of get the community together a little bit and you know, celebrate the day even though we missed out on the other activities. So I think we had talked to the chief. Do you have any comments on that chief? Can you? Yeah, our uh, big concern would be if you know would be if we were going to be expected to shut down roads. Um, because of the, it looks like it's pretty much going throughout the city, and you know, I have a real concern on how we're going to get all those roads shut down for you guys to get through. Um, obviously, if you drove through on your own and obeyed all the traffic laws, then that would take us out of the mix. Um, but uh, you know, some of these are major roads, and if you've got a big group, it's it's definitely going to put a strain on us as far as trying to shut things down. So we we have uh, we were talking probably at least six officers or more um, would be on a holiday overtime for that day for us to try to get some of these roads shut down. Um, so that's kind of my concern. I wasn't sure exactly what you were looking for from us. Um, just be okay to be able to do it and maybe help the police department to, you know, just make it run smoothly for the, the hour that we're going to be doing it. Because for instance, like, you know, we're going to be going across Willow Creek and things like that. We'd have to shut the whole road down unless you were going to stop the lights and let your you know, parade get broke up, you know, by normal traffic, we, we have to shut down a lot of major intersections, at least for well, I tried to do it where we avoided a lot of that, but also have it where the whole town is still involved, you know, if they want to come out to the road or whatever and kind of keep that distance in still. And, uh, so, I mean, there's ways to make it a little better, you know, not not going out of the for instance and stuff like that. Uh, <clears throat> I don't have an issue with those, those things. I was just trying to make it what it was, you know, getting everybody involved as best we could without making anybody upset over the locations. 
Yeah, no, I, I get that. Like I said, our, our biggest concern is just if, if we're going to be needing to shut down side, you know, side streets, have cars in the front, cars at the back, it's obviously going to take manpower and, you know, we're going to be shutting down parts of the city. So that's our concern. Um, we probably do not have enough officers to do that based on our normal patrols for the day. It's a holiday. It's going to be busy. You know, we'll be at a minimum anyway, so we'll have to face them over time um, for that. So those, those are some of my concerns. Um, and you know some of the ones getting across will agree with some of that. I know we did you know we did some of the school stuff and some of the birthday things in the past, which is probably where you got some of this idea. The little bit of the difference was it was you know 20 cars at the most and a few of those or most of those. And when the the governor's orders was we were shut down, we had such little traffic. I'm expecting there to be Fourth of July. City's going to be hopping. So. Yeah, a lot of those were confined in neighborhoods and things. So, you know, I, I do have some concerns about us getting across. Well, if you're talking 70 some cars, I mean, we're going to have to shut down the whole road for however long that takes to get through, which is going to require us to have officers. And then at each new intersection, we're going to have to be able to get ahead. So it's going to it'll be it'll be an undertaking. By us. So that is my concern on um, on doing it. Now, you know, if you're just you know driving through the neighborhoods and you come to a stoplight and you stop, then that's one thing. Um, but we really can't. Do this without shutting down a road because if you go through and somebody crashes, you know we can't say well it's, it's a parade and they should have known better. That's going to be on us. So, um, so that is a consideration. We so is it possible to still have it without shutting and they're just a, obeying the? I mean, I, I would say you can drive anywhere you want to in the city. Um, <laughs> I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm saying you know, but if you, you know if you get a line of cars and you guys go somewhere and it doesn't require us to shut down a road, I don't see how that's bother anybody. Um, it's, if it comes down to us having to shut down roads, then that, that, that is a whole other ballgame. So um, not trying to throw a wrench in your plans, just trying to no, work right. it out so that we can all, you that, know. That's why we're here. So we're trying to figure it out the best way for both sides, you know, make it work for everybody. But uh, if we could do it without having to block roads and everything, I'm sure people would it be opposed to that. I mean, it's just to kind of get out, take great cars, show some love for the city, for the great, you know, the 4th of July events that we normally have here, right. just kind of get out there and do a little celebrating, even though we've had so many things canceled this year already, you know. Yeah, and we don't have a problem with it. The biggest concern, like I said, is is if, if we're going to have a continuous line of cars that aren't stopping for stop signs and stoplights, we have to have some way to shut that down because, like I said, if somebody goes through there and crashes, then, you know, why, why do we allow that to happen kind of thing, you know. So that's, that's where our concern is. If we do do that, then it's going to require an extra decent amount of manpower for us on that holiday. So um, I'm not opposed to either way. I just want it to be known that those are the considerations that, that we're looking at. So whatever, whatever society will we'll accommodate. But um, yeah, as far as driving around and stopping at stoplights and stop signs, then I don't think we have anything to do with that. Which you know, it'd just be normal, normal traffic flow, only to be decorated. So Mark, how many cars do you use? I, I kind of did a total of who wanted to be a part of that, and we were like right in the 70 ish range. Um, you know, it could be more, it could be less, like, you know, depending on once that information's out. You know. Well, what the chief said, no, if you were going somewhere, say, on Central or Willow Creek, you're going to get a stoplight, so maybe 10 cars will go, and you might get another 15 cars going, you know. So maybe we could break it up too, where there's. Ten cars go, and then another ten cars go, and another, and kind of just keep it in smaller groups. Mm -hmm. You know, once we have the full total of everybody joining in on that, maybe smaller groups and have each group do a different part of the city. That's yeah. not yeah. Yeah. Just stay off a little. Yeah. Where are you starting yeah. from, Mark? We, we were going to have it start at Thunder Square because that's kind of the whole gathering point okay. for a lot of the events, anyway. So mm -hmm. that was the the idea was Thunder Square, and then go around the city and end up back at Thunder Square. Mark, that would be a really suggestion. You could all meet here, but you could have three or four different groups and give them a map of what part of the city they have to handle. That's definitely possible. But 70 cars. No, I know. Going through a stop sign, you know, if you get a four-way stop. Well, that's the, the, the outcry of the people wanting to be a part of that is what kind of oil that what this will adopt to. I understand this has been a crazy year. Yes, it's been missing a lot of crazy. Events. And moving to Portage again after moving away from Portage, when I came back, I told the kids, these are these are great things that they do for the city, the 4th of July stuff. Well, the 4th of July great Portage is always one it's of the awesome. biggest. And, yeah, it's part of our biggest tradition, basically. 
So uh, that's that's why I'm at. It's just tradition. We love it. We want to continue it any way we can. Well, we're sorry we had to cancel, Mark. I mean, I think that as a mayor, all of the other mayors and myself got together uh, regarding our cities. I mean, I know Valpo has something, but it's limited to the residents in the city. Correct. And there is no way I would ever limit our no, residents. No, safety is always above all, mm -hmm. and that's just the bottom line. But this yeah. is just something that's safe. And, and a fun thing. And something fun, fun for the, you know, the community to feel a little bit of uh, portage pride, is what mm -hmm. I hate to say. I hear you. That, that's the biggest thing with the parade, just mm -hmm. to see the, the city come together is just amazing. Yeah. Well, I'd like to say, Mark, you know, it's great that you organize this and try to continue some form of appreciation celebration of the fourth, but I, I have to support uh, the suggestion that was made by Member Lewis to break it up into smaller groups, assign them an area, you know, neighborhood-based as much as possible, and, you know, and just obey the, the traffic laws, and I think you can accomplish what you originally intended. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not an issue. And I think, Mark, what I would ask is once you have a final plan, just to let the PD know so that they know about where you're going to be. Because, you know, there will be some PD working, right? Myself. Just, you know, just <laughs> 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 As of now, we're still. Uh, <laughs> 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 you reach out to our police. We don't want anybody getting hurt either. The other thing I would ask you to do when you're lining up, you know, is to respect social distancing in that area as you're lining up because you're going to have multiple people, 70 cars, in one geographical confined area. So, yeah, kind of have them decorate their cars at home, show up, line up, and go from there. Yeah. 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 Mark, my support. suggestion is you should divide the city in four quadrants. Willow Creek and Central Avenue, quadrant one, two, three, four. Have your, you know, how many cars you're going to be in one, you're going to be in two, you know, with a little map or something of what quadrant they're going to be in. So it's organized on your part, not chaotic, you know. Well, maybe you could even start them in their quadrant if you had some space and area. That was large enough. Usually a school. Yeah, I was going to suggest a school. school. Yeah, yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. Start yeah. in the quadrant. Yep. Yeah. So I'd have like a quadrant captain or somebody that could help. You, you know, could start them. one at Christman School, say Meyer School over there, uh, Kyle School over here, and like that. So yeah, you got a lot of work in what, a week and a half, two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it. So if there, even if you have 80 cars, that's 20 cars per quadrant if there's that, you know, but that's more feasible. That's fine. I don't see an issue with that. And I'm sure the people that are wanting to be involved will just follow suit with And just make involved. sure that your people know there's no throwing out candy so there's kids that are on the side or anything. Because that's, that's part of the big thing, you know, because... Right. So. Do we need a motion to? Okay. Yes, you do. Okay. Right. Okay. 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 I know, right? Good luck. Um, I'll start. I'll start. I'll give a shot. Here we go. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion to approve the Fourth of July parade drive around uh, with the parameters that the group redoes the plan to include social distancing at their meeting place and to include plans that they work in quadrants throughout the city to be able to uh, celebrate the 4th of July to keep the tradition. And no passing of candy. And I'd just like to add to that, if I may, to that motion that this plan be approved, at least run by Chief Candy on this Absolutely. office, so they're fully aware of exactly what's going to take place. Yes, I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Are there any further discussions? And are we good on that? I think we're good. So, Nina, would you please call the roll? Mayor Lynch? Yes. Member Finley? Yes. Member Lewis? Yes. Member Sanity? Yes. Member Williams? Yes. Have fun, Mark. Thank you, guys. <laughs> okay, we have the Porter County Black Lives Matter. Is that? 
that you, Missy? Maybe. Oh, well, that's all. Okay, so that's good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, my name is Missy. I'm a Portage resident here. I've been living here for about eight years now. Um, this is my husband, Kevin. He moved here about four years ago. So he, he and I are both transplants from Wisconsin. Go back up. But um, as we know, things around our country have been getting crazy. My goal is not only to stop stop the negativity that's coming from it, but to unite our, our, our community. That's basic, basically my goal. This is my home, this is my city. I'm proud of where I live, I'm proud of my residents, I'm proud of my neighbors. Every time I hear someone say something negative about Portage and how racist it can be, it drives me absolutely insane. Because I live here, this is my backyard. My goal on the 27th is to unite the community. I've been getting an influx of donations from everyone, from churches to restaurants to even my husband's company that's willing to donate supplies, PPE equipment, and food to make this happen. With respect to social distancing, we're looking at about 200 people who are interested in coming to unite Portage as a community to stop the negativity and to make sure that all of our lives matter, not just blacks, not whites, but my LGBTQ counterparts, my human trafficking counterparts, my Asian, my Muslim counterparts, we all matter. And every person in those demographics I know, we all have the same feelings. We are all one race, human race, and we want us to unite under that, and I want to do that in my backyard. I'm tired of going to Hammond, East Chicago. Why am I in Lake County? I live in Porter County. Why is that not in my backyard? Why am I going to Valpo and, and Chesterton? I don't live there. My voice and my efforts, they won't benefit those people. They benefit my, my state. So that's why I'm here. I want my voice to benefit my city. And no lives can matter until black lives matter. That's not to say that we don't respect anyone's lives. We do, but until we can understand that there has been a system in place that has kept us from becoming the best people that we can be, we can't move forward. I've been lucky. I got to go to a private school because I, was, I tested really high. I got to go travel. I got to see things that people with my pigmentation don't usually get to see. And that seems so hurtful to me. With my little boy in Christman Elementary, he shouldn't come home and say, kids don't want to play with me because I don't look like them. That breaks my heart because he's such a, he's such a great kid. He needs to know that he is loved by not just his family, but his community. So with your blessing on the 27th, I like to use the grass to just get this message out. I have people coming from the Indiana Lakeshore, because I, I do their bark ranger job there. My dog Nixon and I, we're bark rangers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we love the <laughs> love hiking and dunes. Yeah. Um, I also have someone from the Northwest Climate Action Committee. They're coming as well. As you guys know, the river walk, completely gone. Since I've lived here, I've watched it erode away. That drives me crazy because I love my river walk. I love my lake. I love my beaches. And the Northwest Indiana Climate Committee, they're the ones working on making sure we can stop that erosion. And I also work with them. So they're coming. I also have someone coming from the Save the Dunes organization. She and I, I got to go to their conference in March. And that was something wonderful because I was able to advocate to our conference leaders and tell them that we need to save our, our Great Lakes. So it wasn't just for Lake Michigan, it was for all of the lakes. So it was still really, really informative. And I also have someone from the League of Women Voters coming, because I'm also a member of that group as well. And they're going to be registering people to vote and also registering people for the League of Women Voters. Because a lot of our members are aging, we just don't have the numbers to keep going. That drives me crazy because I just joined. I don't want to disband, I just got there. So we're gonna hopefully sign up some women and keep our club going. And with hope, I can become president. Just saying. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and again, we will respect social distancing. We do have PPE equipment. My husband's company has been very, very generous and donated us lots of sanitizer and lots of cleaning equipment. So 
I'm not worried about it. Okay, I'm a little worried about it. But we will make sure that we maintain and respect social distancing. Um, again, this is just to bring the community together. It's not about saying people's names or die-ins or stuff like that. I'm kind of over that right now. I just want us to say, look, things happen. We're all sorry. Can we move forward together as one? Can we move forward and say, we're all sickened by this, we're all sad, and we all want change? That's all I want to hear. That's pretty much it. Thank you. <laughs> and yes, I'm, I'm clumsy. I didn't trip twice. Okay. That's it. Did you want to say something? No, does I'm sorry. have any question for Missy? Missy, <laughs> this is going to be held in what, the grass area? Here? Yes, the grass area. This Saturday? Yeah. 12 to 2? Yes. They'll be there at 11, you know. Right. Yeah, I'll be there at 11 setting up stuff, making sure we have the grills, the tables, and all of our equipment in place. We will have a medical tent. I'm sorry. We will have a medical tent in place for people who are experiencing maybe get, uh, heat stroke or things like that. I do work with a nursing agency. She is a registered nurse, and so she's going to have her tent set up for stuff like that. Do you ever have any time to breathe? No, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I'm always like this, too, which is sad. I don't even drink coffee. If there were more people in the city that are in the world that were active, you know, activists, we'd be a better place. So That's what I'm trying to inspire. I really am. The organizations you work in. Like I said, I was one of the lucky few. I got to do a lot of things people like me don't usually get to do. So. Missy, on the application, it says for the route, fire station, the airport road. Yeah, we're going to do a solidarity march, so to speak, and it's just no chanting, no marching, no music. It's just us together, strength in numbers. When the house divided among itself, it can't stand. Yeah, are you going to be walking down the street or the sidewalk? Oh, the sidewalk. I don't want to. No. Do you need extra We're not shutting down the road. I don't see any reason that we do. That was, that was my question. That's why I chose that route, so I wouldn't have to use it. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't have to shut down any roads and affect any businesses, then I don't think we... Okay. That's why I chose it, because I didn't want to inconvenience you guys, because I have a great deal of respect for you guys. Did you get my cookies, by the way? You did get my cookies. That was you. Did you like them? I don't remember. Oh, was that either. a question? Just saying. But yeah, that's my thing. I love the babies. Mayor Sue Lynch knows I love the babies. So she does. That is my thing. I love Black Martha Stewart. <laughs> well, I am. <laughs> So does anybody else have questions for Missy? No question. Oh, the only thing we had there was uh, cooking and things like that. None of that's going on, right? And I we will have a grill going. You, would you prefer a gas grill or a charcoal grill? I mean, if we are allowed to have a grill. Well, I mean, I don't know what the requirements are for uh, all the requirements for the park, but you start grilling, and it, especially if you start grilling in a tent or something like that, that opens you up to needing you know, additional permits. Are that. you selling any food? Or oh, no, God, no. no. It's not even really for it's adults, a, it's really. All, it's all donated it's, food. and. Are, are you just going to have, like, one grill going? Or yes. Just with hot dogs? you're not going to have any food trucks out there, multiple oh, no. grills set up anywhere? No. Just the one grill. Um, um, I'll be doing all the cooking like myself, and I'll be wearing my PPE and everything else. Okay. Um, I have the uh, hand sanitizer also we'll be able to put out on tables, plus right there at the food service area. Um, we'll also have a box of gloves for anybody who wants to help hand out the food because we're not selling anything. Okay. Uh, basically, like my wife said, I mean, this is just for to get the community to start thinking as one. Exactly. You know, we're not... Uh, thinking of race. We're thinking it's not people. You know, it's just so divided right now and we're trying to bring everybody to understand one thing. This is important for all of us to get together. We all need to come to an agreement and move forward with positive change. Okay, yeah, and, and I, as long as it's, you know, one small grill or something like that, so I don't think we have too much of an issue, but you start lining up a bunch of grills, I think that'll yeah. up a whole different uh, set of circumstances for permits and all that other kind of thing, so. so you see, you went to the park, right? I did. Um, did they put any restrictions on, on your event at all, of, like the no. cooking part or anything? She just said, make sure I get with you guys. No, I just wanted to say um, I'm excited about, we have a couple of people in the audience right now that represent uh, Black Lives Matter groups, so I'm excited about 
them coming today to be able to talk about events um, that promote positive change. And I'm excited about the opportunity that we, we have young people here because um, it's, it is time for the 7 to 8 percent of uh, African Americans and the 18 or so percent of Hispanic people that live here to be involved in what's happening within our city and in our community. So I'm excited about that. So um, I wish you luck on the vote. <laughs> We're not done. We have a lot of work to do. Yes, we do. We have a lot of work to do. We're and we're going to take it one step at a time. We do. I'm ready for it. <laughs> Missy just went to D.C., so she's... Okay. I, it, it was right before Corona hit, too, which was crazy, because after I got back, they were like, oh, yeah, by the way. I was like, oh, my God, I was out there with all of those people. <laughs> it was crazy. So we're hearing uh, no further questions. We need a motion to approve Missy's event. I'll make a motion to approve the Porter County Black Lives Matter event on June the 27th from 12 to 2 p.m. I have um, second it. Make sure we have social distancing. <coughs> Absolutely. I'll second it. You have Porter County. Do you want to change it to Portage Community? Well, I have well, I don't friends. Think from, uh, uh, oh, yeah, course. I have friends We're who not, are coordinating with me. No, so I we have don't have gates around the city, and if you have a Portage, you can't. <laughs> I know. I want to say that, but I can't because I have okay. great respect okay. for them. So. All right. So, Missy, I see that you have amphitheater on here. Well, yeah, that's the and technical you're not, name for it. Oh, you're in the grassy area between the grass. police and fire station? Correct. Okay, so everybody everybody gets that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. So we have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Here. Good luck. Thank you. See you Saturday. Absolutely. So we have Block Party by Shelly Grover. Shelly here. That's a shame. I would have loved that block party. Right. Where's Shelly? Right. right. <laughs> Can I speak for her? Do <laughs> you know Shelly? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I should though. That would be all about that one, right? Oh, no. So I guess my question is I don't think you can proceed further here without a hearing answer mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. Well, they're gonna miss out on their fourth of July Did she know Nina, did she know we were having this meeting today? Did she know it was here? Okay. Well, I guess we have to take no action on that because she's not here. No one's here to represent them. Sorry about that. Uh, we have a solicitor's permit for Arnett Associates. Is someone here from Arnett? I am. Hey. Hi. Hi. Linda Arnett, may I approach? Yes, you may. Oh gosh, 
more, I mean, more than a couple of years. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, there are storm chasers that are coming here because we had a major hail storm. Right. You know. No, we've been, like I said, we've been with Ford. He started his business in 1996, right out of high school. We've worked in LaPorte all over all of these years. This is not something new to us. This, is, this community, um, actually, my son was just football, Pop Warner football game. Okay. Um, we have a lot of friends here. So I guess I have a question. Uh, is going door to door um, different than knocking on the door if they put it in the mailbox and they don't approach the door? I don't think you can put it in that box. Not mailbox. No. She said paper box. Paper I'm box. sorry. I apologize. So is that different, Dan? Well, yes. Well, I mean, if our concern with knocking on doors is not as in the restrooms, I'm sorry. You're fine. <laughs> <It's more laughs> discussion. So um, if our concern is that we have this moratorium on door to door solicitation, certainly putting it in paper boxes, it's not a problem. It's certainly different. It addresses that concern. Or on the handle, she said on the handle door so there's no interaction what we were in the moratorium was the one-on-one -on -one personal contact you know. but if someone opens the door but there is a difference with putting it in the paper box yeah is that allowed by like the you know the newspaper if that's their box well I you can't use I sure hope so I've always thrown my political literature <laughs>
anyone in danger. We are not doing this today or tomorrow or next week. Um, you know, do you give me a date that, okay, we'll approve this in a month, two months, whatever. We will abide by whatever you're uh, telling us to do. I guess I'd almost throw that the other way around is once you know that you think it's safe for your employees to do this, mm -hmm. Maybe just come back before the board and say, okay, we're ready to do this now. And then we just take it from there. Yeah. Instead of leaving it open-ended, because you're going to get caught the next time somebody comes up. Well, okay. So you're saying right now you have a, a, a moratorium on no solicitation. Door to door. Door to door. Door to door. Okay. But can we request the, uh, whatever it is, uh, attorney says, or, I'm sorry, what was your name? Dan. 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 Um, if, <laughs> if, if we could do, so do, at some point, start doing the paper boxes and putting them on the door. Well, I think Mr. Member Lewis is saying that possibility exists rather than us determining when that start date okay. can happen, what that future date All right. is. Well, can We're we, saying can we, you, you need to do okay. that. Okay, can we say August 1st? I mean, I don't know what your, your members would. Yes, ma'am. You just said something else, though, about the people that are doing the solicitation. Do we have all the information yes, for background checks and everything? Yes. Yeah, okay, right. Sure. Yes. Are we editing this permit list, or are we staying with the same? Um, I sent everything to Diana. Um, has Diane created a new yes. list or list? Yes. I haven't seen that yet, so. I have that. Well, she didn't send me a copy, but I gave her, we're going with this list, and then you had These are the list. additional the, backgrounds that you These provide. are, yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. So it's an, it's an addition to the original list? No. No. So no. This, you know, this, and we're going with Graydon, and So here's the question. I guess here's the thought. Mine. So this board is not, this board is enacted a moratorium on door-to-door -door solicitation. And do you have all the backgrounds? I do. Okay. This board is enacted a moratorium on door-to-door solicitation. When you guys did that, you said we're not restricting mailing, so people can still mail their stuff. We gave you that caveat, but it was a moratorium. It wasn't a moratorium on solicitation except for we'll pay for box or hang on the door. So that's the moratorium that's in place. So if you take any action other than a line, which you have no way to restrict that anyway, mailing, mailing to the Postal Service solicitation, you are unwinding your moratorium today. We're starting to unwind it. And maybe you want to. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, that's what you're being asked to do. Okay. Place the moratorium with specifics. And now you're being asked to unwind it a little bit. My suggestion would be when the board is to a point where it is ready to start softening that moratorium, that is when we entertain steps back in. That's my suggestion. Okay. Because we had, and the only reason I say that is I've sent letters to right. people that have permits and told them they can't solicit okay. the same thing. Okay. Right. Be consistent with yeah. that message. Yeah. Yeah. That's important. Sure. sure. So what we would do is we would probably um, have to call maybe Nina's office or and find out, you know, like it's going to be on the agenda that we're going to lift the moratorium on door to door solicitation. Otherwise, I don't have a problem if all your, you know, solicitors are uh, background checked and everything. So, um, do we, we make three job one step? Yeah, because we've had several. We've had, you, that, you know, yeah. we've had, you know, landscaping companies sure. and stuff before here. So, but I don't even know if we can say August 1st. Right. Right. No, we don't know if there will be a spot. You don't know. We have to monitor that. Yeah. This young lady said that she wanted to read the letter. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Take no action. Take no action. Postpone until uh, Nina can reach out. Oh, I get a call from Nina. Okay. That we're going to possibly reopen uh, the door to door Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you all very Thank much. Thank you very much. You have a great day. You too. Yeah. You too. So we have Tag Day Light of Light Church. It's Light of Light Church. Right. We've done this probably for seven years now that um, we just collect but for our food pantry. Okay. We have food pantry. We service both in Lake and Porter County. Thank you. But we're in Porter County, so we want to come here. Thank you. Okay. So we just follow the same. And this is on September the 5th from 9 to 3. Is it the 5th? I thought it was the 3rd. Is that a Saturday? Is it the 5th? I'm looking at your project. I probably September. it's my plan. So September the 5th, and yeah. September 5th is a Saturday. Yeah, okay. that's correct. Right. So Sorry. Okay. Okay. I have okay. an elderly brain. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Me too. So, okay. Um, are there any questions? Yes. No, I have a question. Yes. What is, what is our position on tag days? Yeah. Yeah. I know this is like, not till September, but is there a position on tag days? Like a moratorium. Well, Diane said the lady who takes the information when I fill out the application here, yeah. she or at the city hall, mm -hmm. she said that they they're not open yet. But the the meeting, I had to come to one of the board the first board meeting anyone I could come to, so it wouldn't be until September. Mm -hmm. I think we're back at the same position we were just dealing with the previous yeah. person that you know when we get closer to that date that we kind of revisit it mm -hmm. and we just don't take no action. That's fine. She just told me yeah. 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 I follow her directions. Oh, no, no, that's fine. I respect that. Yeah. 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 I get it. That's what I question in the very beginning. So, um, so if we should take no action on this until maybe if we get closer. Should we save the date for her? I mean, you know. Oh yeah. You know, for me, you in case we do authorize it, no one else is spoken for it. Okay, that's right. That's that would be perfect. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. But we never know if there's going to be a surge in these numbers, and I get it. I mean, it, we're doing pretty good here, knock on wood, but other states aren't, so. And we're right next door to one. Mm -hmm. Close. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, if we save the date, then. Yeah, and if, they, if you end up having them, then we're going to for you too. I'll come back whenever. Okay. And okay. If we, you don't, you don't, and I get that. Yeah. Well, that's good. That happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't Thanks, want to be out there if that's the case. Yeah, I know. It's safety for everyone. Right, right, right. That's my Okay. Thank you, Thank you Lynn. You're welcome. Sorry, you had to wait that long. No problem. It was interesting. It wasn't that long. Very interesting. Especially if I'm a new staff. Right? Let me go. Okay, we have Portage Cub Scout Pack 316. Hello. Hello. I am Abby Swift. I am the committee chair for PAC 316. We just started our PAC in October, so we're new to the area. We're our second PAC here in Porter Township, Portage Township, excuse me. Um, we primarily started in South Haven, but we've kind of extended to have kids from all the Portage schools. They're all welcome. Um, but our fundraiser, we're coming here today to talk about a fundraiser for our PAC, um, which would, <laughs> was in April. <laughs> So we had originally planned for April, but with everything going on, we had to adjust days. Um, technically right now, we're up for July 25th on a Saturday, and it's a 5K. We're asking permission to use the trails. Um, I know on my form I said 75 to 100, we're wishful thinking. We have 26 registered right now. Um, you know, we're, we still have it advertised. We don't have, and hopefully we have more interest now that things are starting to open back up. We do have a plan of starting at 10 o'clock. We've discussed as a committee, we can stagger start. We can have like a heat go out at 10. We can have a heat at, you know, maybe at 10 15 or 10 30. So we can social distance if need be. Um, our route, we would start at Samuelson there. So we'd have to cross Central and then cross Airport. Halfway mark is right before 
um, the Willow Creek Tunnel. Okay. So they would we would stop there and turn and come back. So it would start and stop start and stop at Samuelson Road. So it's not going under Willow Creek, and then the five K runners are at an end destination have to be picked up and brought back. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start and stop at the same spot. So it would be crossing two locations there, crossing Central and crossing Airport. Now are you going to have uh, some help getting people across those roads? We, we ideally would like to ask for that. Uh, we do have several leaders in our pack, I mean, but I, I can very well get a bright green shirt, go stand out there and help, but that's not, I don't know if city ordinances will allow that for me to stop traffic, but um, we would like, if we can have, um, I know, the possibility of asking maybe I don't preserve officer do it anymore. Do they we do have volunteers that? that have offers from South Haven, you know, fire department, stuff like that, but that's kind of out of their area. <laughs> so, I mean, we were originally told to come here first and then work out the crossways. Yeah. We've got, I think, three or four reserves now. Unfortunately, with everything else that's happened, their funding got right. down to nothing. Yeah. So yeah. We, we've only got three or four right okay. now. So um, yeah, we can look into that. That yeah, was, of course, my, you know, I'm the broken record here. Uh -huh. But I got to do, I got to do full yeah. roads. Yes. So uh, that seems to be the theme. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that would come down to, you know, if you're doing a staggered start, how many times are we closing these Central major roads? Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So I guess some of that's what we would need to try to right. try to figure out. Um, have you thought Could it be like a do your own risk, you know, type of thing? You know, I mean, it is a Absolutely crossway. Fun. I mean, it's not like we're crossing a four-way. It is. I mean, that would be like crossing. anybody else running the trail any other day. Right? Well, would. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's like not stop. 50, 100 people. We're literally at 26. Well, there are stop signs for the pedestrians on the trail. So yeah. Right. But there might be a car that will let you guys mm -hmm. go. Right. So, so it would be kind of do-it-your-own-risk type of thing. Could we pedestrian walk by? And it's a walk-run, so it is a... It will be a stagger. I mean, people. Have, we're not trying to play Frogger here. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, you know, I'm sorry. Yes. I was going to suggest that I think there's. I know you have your route set, but I think if there's a route that I walked it. I didn't run it. Uh, <laughs> it started IG and okay. had east. Okay. And it takes you around by 49. And mm -hmm. you don't cross any roads. Any roads. Okay. So we were, and I think our, our when I say I see, I'm sorry, imagination flips. Yes. And you can wind around and whip around through there, right, Chief? You know, are you familiar with that route of the yeah. trail? And I, I was going to say, if you've got 25 people, we can probably figure something out. Mm -hmm. um, if it's not a huge group and it's not. You know, right. like I was, I, it all depends on how many. If you've got a bunch, you've got multiple staggered mm -hmm. starts, and we're open and shut. And, um, I understand. All. If you've got 25 people, we can we can probably figure something out between the reserves and maybe you know, um, I don't know what we've got working that day. So why don't if that's what you want to go with, let's maybe communicate a little bit more. Okay. And see, I mean, if I mean, ultimately, people run the trail every day, and we right. don't, we're not out there blocking. It would just be right. obviously okay. you had a massive. Know, all of one big group trying to get across at once. Um, and if your start is a little, you know, Samuelson, then obviously that first group's going to go across together most right. likely, and then they're not going to be that spread out by the time you get to the airport. So right. we could probably accommodate, I would think, a smaller group. If we had a bigger group, we'd probably have to have a different game plan. Okay. We'll, we can probably figure something out. And I think our, our goal is to have our Cub Scouts are participating. You know, we said we want to start up by eight, so like, my family will go and we will do our 5K, so we'll go and do the end mark or the right. halfway, yeah. and then come back. Um, so we'll have it marked, you know, and signed, like, hey, you're halfway, or here's your, you know, turn around and go back. So right. we will have participated in our 5K, because it is our fundraiser, so we try and participate in our pack fundraisers as well. So that's, like she said, that's five of the 26 right there, so. Let's, yeah, we, if you guys are good with it, we can probably work something out with them and make, make it happen, so. Way to work. So I would make any approval subject to them having me worked out with the police department. Because we can't, I, I, I appreciate the enter your own risk thought. <laughs> but we can't do that. <laughs> okay. um, we just, we uh, okayed a 5K at Countryside Park that was held last weekend. Don't they have a... Uh, Track there. A track trail mm -hmm. there. 
That captures that part? Okay. Awful okay. thing which wouldn't require any crossing street mm -hmm. safety right. for young kids. And so that's the one on the right, Route 6, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And it's a paved trail? Or is it a, as a tra uh, off trail? Kind of sure. a gravel trail. A gravel trail. Okay. Uh, I, I'll go and look at it today, but our, I think our idea was because we have families that have Wheelchairs and strollers. Oh, okay. Wheelchairs and strollers. She's a two year old, which she would push in a jogger. Yeah. And, you know, so that's, we're a family pack, so we have a lot of, okay. you know, we have from our little kids up and our boys and girls are all involved, so we try and keep it family oriented. I, I just came yeah. because we just, yeah. we had no, a uh, okay uh, 5K mm -hmm. race that just was there last weekend. Oh, perfect. Well, that's a good place to keep in mind, though. Yeah. Yeah. So you're doing basically a mile and a half each way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the distance is from, say, countryside to Swanson. Well, and that's the thing, like I can probably go and mark other spots. We are trying to avoid the tunnels. Um, some of our kids, we have some younger, our cat is very young. Because that, that's, that's pretty open there, and then you've got, you've got countryside. I'm not trying to change the route, oh, but, I mean, but you've got the park there. Where maybe yeah, you could have the beginning and we can meet there. So, I'm open to suggestions. We just, we're, I live off, I live right here. Have you been in contact so. with uh, Sergeant Maynard, I think? Yeah. Okay. Yes. He's your go-to guy. Mm -hmm. Whatever they decide, get with him, and we'll work over somehow. Perfect. I will contact you again. Thank you. Sounds we appreciate good. it. I'll let him know. Thank you. Can we bring dogs? Just ask me. Uh, the trail is is ported. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's pet friendly. More friend. Yeah. 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 Clean up after your pet. <laughs> yes. Do that. Yes. Yeah. She's no friendly, but she's a girl. <laughs> I mean, my friend. <laughs> we we have we both have dogs that mm -hmm. are. They come to our past meetings. So, yes. But yeah, and it's, I mean, support us if you can. So we're appreciating that help. So we're, we're young and we're new, but we want to um, do everything for our community. So we're big into our community stuff. So, so do we have a motion? I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the uh, Cub Scout tax request for the 5K contingent upon working the details out for the Police department. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yeah, I just had one thing. Uh, are you guys social distancing? You should, you know. We are, Pat. We are. I know. I yeah. know. You're probably family members, and you know, you know. No, all of our meetings. So we met virtually. Um, the entire time during the COVID, so we had to do meetings and such. And then when we were, our council, our pack, our members are, we have 20 like kid members. So then we have the adults. So when our council and then the government was along with us to meet, we met, uh, we still were at 50% capacity because families didn't feel comfortable coming. Uh, but we have all of our kids to come out of the bananas to make a face mask. So yes, we are close to the We meet outside. We just had a camping trip um, two weekends ago at Sunset Hill. So, and it was a very, it, it actually went really well, but it, that's a huge open space, and I mean, the tents were a very social distance, <laughs> so families are very, very much apart, so okay. yes. That's all I have. Can I second it? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, say you cover it in aye. Aye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we have a bulk item appeal. Uh, sanitation has five of them actually. Uh, one's from Nottingham, Marbella, Jackson, and the Is there anyone here that represents any of these? Please stay in the house. Okay. Uh, what I'd like to have the board recommend that we reverse or overturn the charges. And they're all $25. Mm -hmm. uh, Monningham and Marbella, because our crews. If the resident puts the bulk item on such a way where it looks like it belongs to another house, we can sometimes the address is mixed up. So uh, those residents are requesting overturn of those charges because we did charge them one. I went and verified those addresses and they actually are. So we, we have pictures for all these. Uh, the ones on Jackson and Hamilton and the old quarter, um, uh, we did contact these residents by email and phone left messages and informed them of this meeting today. <coughs> So uh, the one was uh, claimed that someone had put the chair at their curb. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. It's up to the board if they want to overturn us or not. I'm asking, since they're not here, I'll pull the charge. The other one on Hamilton was uh, there was a few bags of trash. He's claiming that someone in the night dropped those bags off next to their toter. 
So I just what played on the things. And then the old quarter one was um, that's a if you want to reverse this one or not or pull the charge, it's a, the owner of the home actually went to the hospital. Uh, he's elderly. The family came in, cleaned some stuff up, put those bulk items to the curb. They were not aware of the policy of portage, so um, I'm asking maybe the board to consider that to be overturned for that particular resident. So the old border, Hamilton, or Nottingham and Marbella, I'm asking the board to overturn those. Uh, for Jackson and Hamilton, and Holt, I'm asking to uphold those charges. If you have any questions or if you'd like to see any pictures regarding some of these folk items. Well, I think if they can't come here to defend their thing, we could we should just uh, go with go with the thing. I would like to talk to these people. You know, like we've had people that say, I just moved here and then you look them up and they've been here since two thousand and seventeen. They should know the rules of our uh, Streets and sanitation. Um, but this uh, gentleman here on uh, uh, Hamilton, he's got video camera of him just putting one toter out. But did his um, camera ever say he took a bag out? You know? He did just indicate that he's seen an individual dropping the bags off in the video. Well, Randy, you know how I feel about this. Stuff, yeah. Well, I make a motion that we follow the recommendations that Mr. Reader has laid, laid out in respect to uphold, upholding the two appeals for Jackson and Hamilton uh, that we uh, reverse the fine for the family that was not aware of, of our ordinance whose relative was in the hospital, that's the one on the board, and we also um, we have two, the one on Marbella and uh, Nottingham that the wrong addresses were indicated on the form. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say you by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Major illness claims? So I believe we're down to seven, which the seven that we have. I, I had some of the questions that I kicked back, but I think seven came through the wire. So my suggestion would be either seven that we had uh, that work. I'll make a motion to approve the seven. Um, major, illness. major illness request. I apologize. We knew what you meant, Sean. Thank you, Dana. <laughs> Second. We have a motion by Shauna, seconded by Steve, on seven major illness claims. No further discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, backing up, we have the claims jumped out of line here. So did everybody get a chance to look at the claims? Nina, I do have a question on the enterprise leases. Um, what are those deals? We have leases. We've got two leases with enterprise. One's for utilities and one's for city vehicles. Um, there's also the Verizon lease and there's a one lease. So, and there's the vehicles. Any questions by the board on the claims? The one question I had was on the ADP tax impound. Mm -hmm. It was 153000 Yeah, Nina. So okay. when the utilities, when the USB got split, um, a lot of things weren't fully finished with that. Uh, one of those was the utilities payroll account with the IRS. So ADP was paying the city's taxes all, all on behalf of the city of Portage, not the utilities. So we ended up getting something from the IRS like, hey, you're not paying payroll taxes. It's like, oh, yes, we are. 
So that it was just fixing that. Okay. And it has been closed since. Okay. Sorry, any other further questions on the claims? Just to note, the claims are four million. It got amended because we have the Indiana bond. Okay, bank that's right. That right. You have another bond. Yeah. Um, and this was from um, tax anticipation warrants issued in January of this year to be paid back in June. So it's so it's eight million five hundred three thousand eight hundred sixty nine dollars and fifty six cents. Everybody hear that? We see the very large settlement here. Yeah, part of that's yeah, part of that's dealt with our June settlement, so it's not mm -hmm. a they don't hit necessarily. Right. I just think the public needs to know that it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So, um, hearing no further discussion, do we have a motion to approve the claims? I make a motion to approve the claims. We have a second. I'll second. We have a motion by Steve, second by Shauna to approve the claims. Nina, would you call the roll, please? Kayla? Yes. Mother Finley? Yes. Mother Lewis? Yes. Mother Kennedy? Yes. Mother Williams? Yes. Is there any other business to come before the board at this time? That was the end of our... Yes. I got one thing. Okay, with you guys. Uh, apologies for not getting it on the agenda, but it just propped up, or propped up today. Uh, we have a canine that we're going to need to uh, retire based on some health um, issues. Um, I think it'll be okay in retirement, but it's just not able to do the job anymore. So uh, the handler and uh, Captain Monks, who was here, brought it to me today. And so I wanted to get to you guys today because uh, what we would like to do is retire him um, on the last day of June, June 30th, based on uh, part of it. They get a stipend and such, so the six months would run out at that time. So it's, it's kind of a neat, perfect ending for it would be the 30th for us, but there isn't a board meeting until afterwards. So basically what we're asking is is for approval to turn that dog over to the officer. So on uh, let's see here. Uh, March of 2014, uh, Officer Dander signed an agreement with uh, Chief Williams, basically stated that um, once the canine is officially retired from duty and mutual decision between the handler and the chief based on health and certification status of the canine, uh, that the canine will become property of its handler and the handler will assume all costs and care. So basically all we're asking is for your approval to basically turn that um, canine over to um, his, his handler. He's been with them for six years, done a great job for the city, and that's kind of what we've done in past practice. Um, so basically, uh, He'd be signing off that uh, as of July 1st, uh, he would assume all costs and responsibilities associated with K9 Nakir. So I'm just asking uh, for approval from you guys for that. Will we be retiring again? Can what? You, the, the, um, the, the dog's name? Nakir. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Are, you. are they planning on replacing Nakir? We're going to look into it at this point. You know, the K9 program is a. It's, uh, it's, I mean, it's great, and we've got a lot of uh, things through donations and stuff. They're pretty much at the point now where they're, once they get the dog, they become self-sufficient with fundraisers and things. But um, it is a whole process in pairing the dog with, uh, you know, getting the right handler, getting the right dog, and, and the, the fees to get started. In the past, for the most part, we've gotten grants and things, so we really haven't paid any out-of-pocket for that. So, yeah, we're going to look at it, but it's probably not going to be, in the next couple of months, it'll be something we'll look at down the line. So that'll leave us with three hand, four handlers, four handlers. No, three handlers left. So I'll make a motion that we retire Nick here. I'll second. We have a motion if I could suggest that that motion include uh, the retirement and the dog being turned over to his hand. Okay. Gotcha. Um, it's technically city, dogs technically city property, so we're asking that it oh, okay. be, be removed from the city property and become the owner's property, and that they'll take over all you know future future uh, costs and things. So. so we have a motion and a second to um, turn Nick here over to his handler. Uh, is that June thirtieth will be the end date for Nick here? Uh, June thirtieth, yeah, it'll be his last last day of duty. So, all in favor, signify, signify. Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. 
I'm glad to know that Nick here is going to get to stay with his family. Thank you. Is there any other business to come before the board? There was an item in uh, Dropbox that a mayor called contractors quote for public work. I wasn't sure what the reason it was in Dropbox. Nina, are you familiar with that document? And I do we have to take any action on it? Uh, that was... It's the last item in, uh, put in Dropbox yesterday. That's for the street light maintenance. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Contract. Okay. That's for street light maintenance. All right. Yeah. I didn't know that's the biz we'll put down, right? We already did that. Right. I, I yeah. realized that, but it, yeah. yeah. I didn't know if it was uh, a different item. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, Jeremiah, do you guys want to bring something up? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, we're here with, I think it's the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, we held the protest that was on, I forgot the date that we held that on, but we held a June peaceful, first. June 1st, okay, <laughs> the peaceful protest, uh, we were in charge of that as well. Um, a lot of people have asked us what is the next step in this process, and we were talking about all the lives that have been lost, not just to police brutality, but to injustices and violence altogether. You know, um, Junior, who was killed in New York, he wasn't killed by police, he was killed by people that he, were his friends, you know. There's things like that. There has been people who have died in Port, like not killed in Port, but attended Port High School who have passed away. One of them was my friend. Um, and so we had a vigil that was um, scheduled for Saturday. But the forecast told us that there was a huge storm coming. Um, so when we were supposed to start is when it started raining. However, the rain passed after about 30, 40 minutes. But our DJ already told us he can't come because of the, he wasn't sure, you know, that's a lot of equipment, that's a lot of money, we can't risk to ruin. Um, so we looked, we were looking at our parks contract and it said we, if there is um, weather issues or anything like that, we have the right to move our date. So our, we were looking forward to moving it to Thursday because that's when um, the DJ is available, that's when we're available. We looked on the Parks Department page. Um, there are no other events. We've been in contact with the Parks Department. They also said there were no other um, no other events on that day as well. And it's from 6 to 9. Um, it's just a candle vigil to remember everybody who has passed due to any type of violence in any type of community, not just black lives, but Hispanic, Asian, white, any type of life that has been lost due to any type of injustice. And what day were you looking for? Um, Thursday, the... The 25th. The 25th. This Thursday? Yes. Yes. This Thursday. Yes, yes, we wanted to keep it within, you know, the same time frame so everybody was still... Um, what were open. the times again? It's from 6 to 9. And where was the location? Um, at the amphitheater. So we'll be in the grass, the candles and stuff will be on the grass, but our DJ and the organizers, there's four of us, we will be on stage, we'll be the only ones with access to microphones except those who we have cleared to speak. Um, we have things to wipe down the microphones before each person talks for safety. And we also have had a lot of um, PPE that has been donated to us as well, a lot of masks and things like that, and gloves and water stuff, things to help it run smoothly and keep everybody safe. So, Mike, um, I know that for Saturdays, you had some officers dedicated to that. Is that going to happen again, or do you feel that that's... you guys had any feedback that you might have any problems? I know last time there were some groups that had reached out to you, you know, that you might have... Right. They might be there to cause you some problems. Have you guys had anything like that? Or? Um, no, I think everybody, because people had a problem with the Black Lives Matter movement altogether um, and the protesting, people felt very negative and felt like what we were doing wasn't right, but I think once they saw how peaceful we were and how we really conducted our business and we had a whole bunch of people who were in offices joined with us, I think they're more open and their heads are more like, oh, okay, we, they got this, they're under control. So we haven't received anything and it's not just, we're honoring people who have also, we, who we've lost in our community. Um, there was just a girl who passed away this past weekend in a car accident, you know, she'll be honored as well. So it's not just violence, it's, it's for our community to come together and heal, and I think people are respecting that and understanding. So we've had a lot of positive feedback. I mean, there's been like one, two people who said like, oh, we need to keep this out of our community, but violence doesn't happen everywhere else but our community. It also happens here. So I think that's what people are understanding. 
So you guys aren't requesting anything from us? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. We, I know we worked together real well on the last one, but absolutely. if if, uh, if they're not requesting anything from us and there's no, it sound like there's going to be any issues, I, I, I guess we would probably treat it as any other get together at the park and call us if you need us. And I'll just say that um, one of the things that I do know, since it is a peaceful protest, my church, that's why I'm kind of wearing my shirt today, um, I attend Terminal Life Community Church, and I know that they are partnering with the organization as well, as well as City Point. Am I correct in saying that? That they do have some faith-based leaders in the community who are supporting the efforts of the prayer vigil as well this upcoming Thursday. Okay. Good. Well, good luck. And we hope it won't rain. I think it's going to rain for you, but you. I know. we are so so like, we're like, oh, it's going to be a big storm, and then it drizzles yeah, for about 30 minutes, and so. we're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the parks, just to clarify, the park department's aware of uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, they sent me my contract to redo it with the new dates um, last night, mm -hmm. yesterday evening. So I'm filling those out today and sending them. But they have said that. There's no other events. They've already cleared it once. Um, the venue's paid for, so and we've had everything. Um, we've, they know about our DJ that's coming. Everything has been set in order. Good deal. Well, thank Good you. And, and you know, I know you worked really hard. On, I don't like to call it a protest because I thought it was a very peaceful event. And I know that you guys had a lot to do with that. You worked really hard to bring all those kids together. I think it was an amazing thing. And I was very proud of all of you kids and Portage, mm -hmm. uh, that we were the face of Portage and we didn't have any problems whatsoever. So I think it was Thank you. amazing. It was amazing. Thank you. Even my dog in my head with me. Yes, Danny even brought his dog. So, I mean, I, uh, we don't have to approve this. It's already been pre-approved. Um, unless you want to just, for technicalities, say, it's okay, we're, we're good with you for this Thursday. We know you had to cancel your event Saturday, so. Yes. Dan says, Dan says we're good. I think you're solid. Okay. <laughs> so, good luck, kids, and I just hope you don't have any rain. So. <laughs> that's that's we'll the only day it. of the week that said it was 100% clear, so we were like, <laughs> that's the day we're going to go around and take any chances. That's it. So. It's going to be good. <laughs> Thank you. So, how many do you think you're going to have there? Um, on the event, it says like 100, but there's people who haven't respond, like who didn't respond to the event. But they've, I've sent it to everybody on Facebook, on my friends list so far, and they're like, oh yeah, I'll be there, I'll be there. Because it's open to outside um, cities as well. It's open to everybody who's lost a lot of people. There are people who are traveling from Illinois to come as well. Um, some friends who I have that I, my, I call my skate family. They're coming, they've had friends, so they're coming with shirts and stuff to remember their loved ones as well. So I, I want to say about 250 maybe, 250, 300, but we're, we're trying our very best to keep it as safe as possible with the candles because, you know, it's fire. It's, yeah. it's, it's fire, but we're, we're doing our best to keep everything. And I hope you don't have any wind either because then you won't have fire. That's great. I'm great about that too. Yes. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. Okay, well, good luck. Thank we'll you. We'll be over there. So if you need anything, let us know. Most definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other business to come before the board? I had submitted a letter, so I don't know, and, and uh, the application, so I don't know if I maybe uh, it, it's just not on the agenda. Or if there's a uh, uh, lead time on that or something, but I had uh, just a similar request that the big time burger, uh, big time burgers did. Uh, um, so I don't know if I'm able to present that or do I? Are you loose? Yes. Yes, I did see that. I did see that. And so is that? That, that was another location? That's another location. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think, Dan, do you have that? Because we didn't bring that with us. Do you want to bring that up? Yeah, I'm happy to bring that up. Or I, that's right. I didn't know if I should come back next, next meeting. Or... I can compare extra copies of it, but um, essentially, okay. again, really kind of the same, similar request that uh, Big Time Workers is requesting. Uh, so we have a pizza restaurant that's opening uh, at Founder Square. Um, we obviously picked the, the worst time to start a new uh, pizza restaurant. So we were 
planning on opening this spring and, and let's put the brakes on things you know, due to everything that's going on. Um, you know, we have things geared up now to to, uh, to open uh, just after the Fourth of July. So you're going to use? Uh, my name, I'm sorry, is Dan Turzman with the Luke family. Okay. Thank you, Dan. So. Um, what we're uh, simply proposing is, uh, again, uh, outdoor seating. Uh, we have uh, seating being allocated for 28 spaces there. Of course, that's um, you know, at full capacity, which you know, the, the, the restrictions currently on restaurants are, are, are you know, 75%. Um, with uh, the way they, should, they say things now, that, that, you know, that could be opened up. But obviously, we would certainly follow what the, you know, the the state guidelines are on, on restaurants to allow seating. Um, would there be alcohol? Uh, there would be alcohol. Uh, we did uh, uh, present this to the uh, to ATC with our uh, uh, liquor license. Uh, they you know, essentially uh, contingently approved it based on approval from the from the city. Um, we would be putting fencing. Uh, uh, what we've done at other restaurant locations and what we intended to do here. Um, is to attach uh, those uh, kind of decorative fence panels, um, but rather than uh, so that they wouldn't be permanently in the ground, we have uh, we attach them to uh, pavers, concrete pavers, so then that way they're movable, uh, but then they're they're secure for uh, for the season. Where is your new location? Um, it's in Founders it's Square. It's where in relationship, say, to Big Time Burger. It is basically the building west. Okay. So it's right next to the, our, our suite is uh, uh, adjacent to the clubhouse and so call it the for the building. So Dan, um, yes. you're not open actually? We're not open yet. Our plan is to open uh, in, uh, in July. Okay, so you have an occupancy permit or any of that yet? Uh, we have a, we don't have the occupancy permit yet. Um, so we have the, uh, the Construction is is uh, complete. They're working on seating it, uh, getting the, the fixtures and furnishings in that, um, with the with the intent or with the goal to to open. So this is essentially asking permission for this as part of our fixturing and furnishing plan and, and that and, and training plan for for opening. So your plan is 28 outdoor spaces. 28. So that be four people per table, seven tables. Uh, we have combination of seats. So. Um, you know, these would be these are two uh, two per table. We do have four table uh, four tiles shown. Um, you know, there's often our families and that would be uh, uh, so that's two two combinations. The two yes, the two tiles. And how much room does that still leave on the sidewalk? There's uh, essentially four foot of sidewalk across the uh, the front. So Dan, I guess I have a question. Um, when you open that, will your business be open as well? Your yes. inside business? Yes. Yes, that would be the intent. So, yes, and we would wouldn't be opening any of this without occupancy and all our final, you know, uh, uh, approvals and that. This was essentially just, uh, you know, again asking permission to to do this as part of our. Uh, business plan for setting up, uh, you know, for fixtures and furnishings. And that. So, uh, but yeah, our intent would be to to open this with, you know, as part of the the, the restaurant offering. So I would like to ask the board to not act on this today. I'd like to have an opportunity to review this. The four foot walkway concerns me a little bit. I haven't seen those plans. I don't think AJ has seen them either. Have you? So I would ask that the board give us an opportunity to review this with you guys. And okay. Maybe revisit it at our next meeting. And we meet every two weeks, Dan. Is there, what is the appropriate, how, uh, as far as to get, because I, you know, as far as getting plans, I drop plans off. Is there a certain, should I get those two? Uh, yeah, if you could give me a copy, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. In fact, I can even leave you with this if you'd like. Even easier. That's better. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, Alex. Um, <laughs> So we are tabling this right now um, until the next meeting or when Dan contacts us and said he's ready to bring it back up. Yes, please. Pardon, Nina? I'd like to make a motion to table 
Um, yeah, but that's the name of your company? Luke, 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 Luke Family Brand until um, after Dan and AJ's review. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second by uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Thanks, Dan. Is there any other business to come before the board works? If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you all. Thank you. 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 Thank